I affirm as a Messianic Jew um, that we can't earn our way into heaven. And yet, is it really true that that's what the Judaisms of the first century were teaching? Is it really true that this, that's what they're still teaching today? So, where is the opposition, right? So, when I say Judaism and Christianity are incompatible with one another, are we saying that Messianic Judaism is an empty set? You cannot be a Christian Jew? Is it true that once you come to Christ that you have to give up your Jewishness? You have to give up your law-keeping, your respect and devotion to Torah? Is this true? Right? It has been taught. In, in certain circles, in Christian circles, fortunately, it's no longer um, PR, right? It's not, it's not really even, I mean, can you imagine the, 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 the uh, serious pushback? And, um, uh, um, you know, in this day and age of, of everyone's enlightened, right, the, this woke society that we live in, you say something bad about one people group and suddenly you got lawsuits flying over your head. So um, saying that Judaism is... Um, is a bankrupt religion is not going to fly in today's modern age. So we talk about this idea, are Judaism and Christian incompatible with one another? And uh, we also talked about, as I say, the idea that Judaism must give way to Christianity if a person wishes to become a genuine and lasting follower of Yeshua and his father. And so it's an unfortunate patch of history, of Gentile Christian history, where the Gentile Christian Church kind of ran with this idea that Jesus is bringing something so radically new that Judaism is incompatible with this new way of approaching God, and Jewish people in the early or in the earlier days of the um, emergence of the Gentiles onto the scene as as uh, full fledged members of the church. Um, so what what Christians would recognize as the early church. Uh, so, so starting from the book of Acts and going forward, it was very it's it wasn't uh, it wasn't uncommon in the later centuries to follow to find Gentile Christianity um, forcing Jews into an uncomfortable corner where they had to abandon their Jewish lifestyle if they wanted to convince people that they were genuine Christians. Um, you have to give up all that Sabbath keeping, give up all your kosher keeping. Um, you need to start doing all of the um, things that make you look like a Gentile Christian. Eventually, um, Messianic Judaism kind of dropped off the map. It kind of went underground. Um, even though the first uh, followers of Yeshua were Jews and they were believers, they were Christians, so they were they were Messianic Jews. And then we have Gentiles that were joining this this Hebraic movement, this Jewish movement, you know, this movement led by a Jewish uh, martyr. And those Gentiles who originally joined still did what Gentiles would call Jewish things. They were still meeting in Sabbaths. They were still um, walking after the laws of Moses because that's what they were taught from the Messiah and from the, uh, the apostles. And yet, again, as, as time moved forward, um, that Messianic Jewish expression of life uh, gave way. It, it collapsed. It couldn't hold up uh, because the majority opinion was, well, all of this is really done away with. It's been replaced or it's been full. I'm going to use the F word again. It's been fulfilled. All right. So let's keep reading my own commentary. So I say, essentially, we um, demonstrated in my commentary that this view would leave no room for Messianic Judaism since all followers of Yeshua would become de facto, quote, New Testament Christians, end quote. That's kind of the term that's used today. We're, we're not Old Testament Christians. We're New Testament Christians. And I say this would be said with no cultural ties to historic Judaism and its ritual laws and customs. And so if you ask your average Gentile Christian today, they'll probably let you know, no, I'm not an Old Testament. I'm not an Old Covenant Christian. I'm not an Old Testament believer. I'm a New Testament Christian. And I have to actually stop and give a little bit of credit for their answer. Obviously, they're being honest, but we need to nuance the phrase Old Covenant and New Covenant or Old Testament, New Testament, because it's quite often the case that what they mean by Old Covenant and Old Testament is not actually what either I mean or what I understand Paul to mean by those same phrases. So if you ask me, Ariel, are you under the Old Covenant? It depends on my understanding of your understanding of the word Old Covenant. I might say, yes, I am under the Old Covenant, or I might say, no, I'm not under the Old Covenant. 
and just let you kind of scratch your head and figure out what my confusing answer is. Obviously, I'm, inv I'm inviting a dialogue on the topic, Old Covenant and new, uh, new, uh, new Covenant. And I've got a short little video that I put together that I'll flash a little um, uh, thumbnail on the screen in post-production on, on um, the topic of Old Covenant, taken from uh, kind of a short mini-study on 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3, where Paul uses that phrase, Old Covenant. So... Most people would call themselves New Testament Christians, New Covenant Christians, and that's their way of simply saying, we don't have to keep the law of Moses anymore, right? It's been done away with or it's been fulfilled. 